pleasure to welcome all of you tonight to the third annual David Morrison Lecture in International Development here at Trent. My name, for the few of you in this room who don't know me, uh, is Haroon Akramlodi, and I'm chair of the Department of International Development Studies here at Trent. Tonight, we're extremely pleased to have with us Professor Henry Bernstein, who recently, only two weeks ago, became Professor Emeritus of Development Studies in the University of London at the School of Oriental African Studies in London, England, which is where I did my first degree. Now, to begin tonight's lecture, I want to call upon uh, the university's president, Stephen Franklin, to offer a welcome on behalf of the university. Thank you. Thank you, Haroon. Good evening, everyone. It's, uh, it's my pleasure to be able to offer my own words of welcome tonight. And I'd like to start by uh, introducing another member of the uh, former administration of the university. We have our founding president, Tom Simons, here with us tonight. Tom. And uh, just as I was uh, returning to the room, I was able to come in with a uh, former board chair of our uh, board of governors, John Grant. John is here. But it's uh, really my honor and pleasure to uh, thank Dr. David Morrison and Dr. Elena Heitlinger, without whom this lecture series would not be possible. Here at Trent, we are proud to offer our students, faculty and staff, together with members of the wider community, the opportunity to engage with and learn from experts and leaders from other universities and other countries, individuals with diverse backgrounds and perspectives on the critical issues facing our world today. The David Morrison Lecture in International Development is a perfect example of this conversation. Established by Dr. David Morrison, Professor Emeritus at Trent, and his wife, Dr. Heitlinger, also a Trent professor, this lecture series aims to bring globally distinguished and renowned scholars to Trent to share their groundbreaking work in the international development field with our community. Tonight's speaker, Henry Bernstein, has made tremendous contributions to scholarship and international development and is an excellent reflection of David and Elena's wishes in establishing this lectureship. It's a tribute to you both that we have Dr. Bernstein tonight. On behalf of the entire Trent and Peterborough communities, thank you for your vision, for your contribution, your dedication in creating this important lecture series and for establishing this important legacy at Trent. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Franklin. So, I now have the immense pleasure of introducing to you Professor Henry Bernstein. Now, as I already said, Professor Henry Bernstein is Professor Emeritus of Development Studies uh, in the University of London at the School of Oriental African Studies in London, England, and is also, uh, for the past several years, an adjunct professor at the China Agricultural University in Beijing, where he's been spending an increasing amount of his time. Having studied history and sociology at the University of Cambridge and the London School of Economics, Professor Bernstein has taught at the Universities of Kent, Manchester, and London, and has been a lecturer and researcher in Turkey, the US, China, South Africa, and Tanzania. And I want to spend a second thinking about that South Africa-Tanzania connection. I think it's really worth stressing. In development studies, there has been a remarkable generation of teachers and researchers whose professional life was shaped by their encounters in Southern Africa in the late 1960s and early 1970s. In particular, they were shaped by the struggle for the liberation of Southern Africa, highlighting the fact, in my view, that for the best in development studies, the purpose of knowledge is about how understanding change for the better can be brought about through the deliberate and intentional action of people working together. And two people of that generation are here tonight, not one. Professor Bernstein taught at the University of Dar es Salaam for four years in the early 1970s, and by his own admission earlier tonight, it had a profound impact upon him. But our own David Morrison is also part of that generation, having taught at the University of Zambia for two years in the early 1970s. And it too shaped him, because in the end, development studies for all of us forces us to confront messy, complex, and contradictory realities and understand them and the processes of change of which they're a part. Indeed, since his early professional career, Professor Bernstein has been best known for his research on change and development, particularly the political economy of agrarian change. 
He was a co-editor of not one, but two of the most important scholarly journals in this part of the development studies field. The Journal of Peasant Studies between 1985 and the year 2000, and the Journal of Agrarian Change between 2000 and 2008. I count myself very fortunate to say that I've known Henry for around 20 years. But I've actually known of him for a lot longer than that. When I was an undergraduate at the School of Orange and African Studies back in the early 1980s, uh, and well before he moved there, because he wasn't there at the time, there was a book that was absolutely central to the syllabus of a friend of ours, Terry Byers' syllabus, his second year syllabus. And that book was this one, Underdevelopment and Development. This version, the version I used is the second edition. And let me just say something from the introduction of this particular book, which you probably haven't heard in a while. Uh, the interaction between external forces and the internal social dynamics of third world societies is complex and variable and is clearly subject to historical change. The interaction between the outside, the inside, is complex, but we have to understand history. This, to me, sounds like the Trent IDS mission statement. Now, of course, as an undergraduate, I assume that the editor of this book that I had to use was a very senior scholar in the field of international development studies. Little did I know that when he edited this collection, he was 26. This helped define the field that brings us here tonight, international development. And indeed, Henry, Henry is still helping to define our field, except like all of us, our field is so much more mature than it was back then. On the weekend, I read Henry's new book, which he's going to be speaking about tonight, Class Dynamics of Agrarian Change. And I'm fortunate, unfortunate to say, I actually had my copy before he did. My second year students in the room, they've already seen it. Because I think it's so good and so accessible, and yet at the same time so rigorous, that I used it in my teaching yesterday. And it's going to be one of the set texts in IDST uh, Anthropology 2210 next year. Uh, so if you're a first year student, uh, if you buy it tonight, you get a discount. <laughs> so almost 30 years after I first came across his work, I myself am still learning from Henry's work. And using it, I hope, to enhance the learning of my students. Henry's work is very widely used throughout our undergraduate programs here. And parenthetically, I really must say that for those of us that work in the, the department, we are very fortunate to work in an environment where the work of a scholar like Henry is treated with the respect and attention it deserves, because that is very rare. And for that, we also have to, have to offer thanks to David Morrison. Now, when I think of Henry's scholarship, there's several things I could say about it. I'm struck continually by the trenchant and penetrating character of the analysis that he produces. Henry is a very demanding scholar, and he expects no less from those that he works with, because the political economy of development on a world scale is far too important to be left to those who would give political economy a bad name. Henry does not mince words. He says what he thinks about something, highlighting problems, and making, when necessary, one feel incredibly uncomfortable because discomfort forces us to address the weakness in what we're doing and in our understanding. And I know that my own work has benefited over the years from being forced into some quite profound discomfort by Henry, and I thank him for that. But having said that, Henry is also an immensely loyal, immensely generous, and very warm-hearted friend, colleague, and comrade. And generations of his colleagues, students, and friends will attest to that. So without further ado, I give you Professor Henry Bernstein and his lecture tonight, Class Dynamics of Agrarian Change, writing a small book on a big idea.